Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Amin. Today I'm gonna bring you a somewhat unusual case. Well, I think all the cases I make are special anyway. And this case occurred in Singapore, although all persons involved are from China. So I guess I ought to make some introduction of Singapore from my point of view. In addition to this beautiful landscape cities and scenic greenery, Singapore's laws are quite interesting as well. Its legal system is actually quite strict and highly specific. Do you know that in Singapore, you can get fined for doing a lot of things? I mean, seriously, some of the stuff seems pretty normal but can actually get you in trouble. Check it out. Um, feeding pigeons in the plaza would cost you 500 Singapore dollars fine. Using someone else's Wi-Fi without permission, that's 10,000 Singapore dollars fine. Flying skies in unauthorized areas, that's 5,000 Singapore dollars fine. Not flushing the toilet after years, that's 150 Singapore dollars fine. Littering cigarette butts, that's 1,000 Singapore dollars fine. Smoking in public places, fines ranging from 200 to 1,000 Singapore dollars fine. Getting excessively drunk on the streets late at night, that's 1,000 Singapore dollars fine. Spitting in public, that's 1,000 Singapore dollars fine for the first offense and 2,000 for subsequent offenses. Sing loudly in public and disturbing others, that's a thousand Singapore dollars fine. Even hugging someone without consent can cost in a fine. Crazy, yet in a way funny, right? So on the evening of 18th of September 2008, the folks living in a 12-story apartment building in Singapore were stuck listening to their neighbors bicker for several hours. Not a great way to spend night, huh? These weird noises from one place kept happening on and off. You know, when the neighbors were just about to step in and break up the argument when all of a sudden, everything just got quiet. Until most of the people turned off their lights and about to fall asleep with this big thud, everyone was like instantly scared out of their wits, hearts beating like crazy. Cause they had heard this argument before. Everyone was like feeling uneasy and expecting the worst, right? When they opened their windows and looked down, they saw a woman lying on the ground with thick liquid surrounded her head. It was a point midnight though, nobody was stalling but calling the police right away. The cops showed up super quick and started scouring the whole building. They didn't know which apartment the lady was in, so they had to check every single one. So when the investigators got to this um, sixth floor, and some of them spot some really sketchy marks on one of those doors, you know. These marks look very much like bloods. They had a hunch it was the right spot, but they figured they should probably knock first. I mean, they didn't have a search warrant or anything that would give them the green light to burst into anyone's place unannounced. So they knocked, but got no answer. But when they put their ears against the doors, they heard this faint noise coming from inside of the flat. These obviously meant that someone was home. Were there any people around here who don't know what was going on? I don't think so, and so did the cops. They knocked much louder and more frequently until a guy opened the door a teeny tiny bit. So when the two parties saw each other, neither had a good vibe going on their faces. Please ask why it took him so long to answer the door. The guy said he was in the shower. So sorry, sir. I couldn't hear you. And he was just about to close the door back up again while he was still talking. His behavior is just way too suspicious, isn't it? Plus, while they were talking, this smell of death came right from inside of that apartment. 
So despite that guy was reluctant, the police kind of forced themselves in. Not sure how legal that is in Singapore, but good thing they did. As the interior was like it in many horror movies, it was blood everywhere. The floor, walls, doors, kitchen, lounge, bathroom, name it, all covered in red. And there was a window in the kitchen that was wide open. It seems like that woman who died fell through this particular window. Well, you see, if that woman was dead because of the falling, there shouldn't be so much blood, right? The police expected to see other victims, and they did. There was a forty-ish woman lying on the floor in the bedroom, and she looked like she was dead for quite a while when the police found her. She had dozens of stab wounds on her, and her lower body was damaged severely. And she wasn't lying there alone. There was a teenager girl, also dead, with many stab wounds on her as well, and they. Found a serrated knife in this bathroom, you know, right next to this tin. However, that's not the last victim in this apartment. There was another, even younger girl, was lying in blood in the shared bathroom next to the kitchen. But the good thing is, she was still breathing when the police found her, so she was sent to the nearest hospital for resuscitation. As for the guy who opened the door. He was surrounded by cops, of course, but he acted very differently. So this male didn't look all freaked out or mad like this、um, usual suspect who got caught red-handed. Instead, he kept muttering something under his breath. He smelled like he was just got out of the shower, but on his face he looked like he was super confused or something. Anyway, the police had to take him in for questioning because he was the only person who was very much alive at this crime scene. It didn't take much longer for the police to find out their identities. The guy is Wang Zhijian, a 42-year-old Chinese guy staying in Singapore on a short-term visa. That woman fell out of the window was Yang Jie, aged 36 at the time. She was on a companion visa. In Singapore, because her daughter, who was only sixteen, you know, she studied there, and she was the injured girl. It's a similar case for the other pair of mother and daughter died in the same apartment. The other victims were Zhang Meng and her daughter, and they were just living under the same roof, flatmates. Nothing too complicated their relationship was. The crime scene clearly involves two pairs of mothers and daughters from separate families, and this Wang Zhijian is not related to either group. What happened that he seemed so restless and appeared there? Well, because there were three others in this case here. Naturally, the police would like to dig out the mother's information first. When they ask around, Zhang Meng. That woman died in the flood was described by her friends as a traditional Chinese woman, very knowledgeable, sensible, and tactful. On the other hand, Yang Jie, that woman fell out of the window, was characterized by her neighbors as always leaving the flood with heavy makeup, dressing very proactively. I heard she works as a personal assistant for a boss, like a lifestyle assistant. Wow, the level of misogyny in this thing is just mind-boggling. Like seriously, ill. Although nowadays we are fortunate to have greater access to information and education about gender issues, which is incomparable to the past. However, it angers me to hear people making unfounded comments or assumptions that belittle women. And associate them with negative attributes. So I'm not even bothered with those ridiculous speculations from the media back then, when they were basically just making stuff up about the private lives of female victims. That is just so messed up. All right, so it wasn't until the teenager girl who got taken to the hospital woke up and was able to get questioned by the cops. That this complex yet easy to follow web of relationship among the five people was finally figured out. 
According to the girl, there's absolutely no relationship between Wang Zhijian and her mother Yang Jie, and the alleged connection with the boss is just a rumor. Even though the boss did have feelings for her mother when she found out about his inappropriate intentions, she returned all the gifts and decided to quit soon. Finally, the girl explained that Wang Zhijian was Zhang Meng's lover. Or it would be more appropriate to say he was her boy toy. He would do anything she asks, even if it was unreasonable. For instance, the girl saw Zhang Meng give Wang Zhijian a newspaper and tell him to stay in the room all night, even saying that he had to pee on that newspaper if he needed to go. And Wang Zhijian actually stayed in there all night, as he was told. But why was he so obedient to Zhang Meng? Did she have something on him, or what? With these thoughts, the cops went back to Wang Zhijian and greeted him even more. Wang Zhijian realized he couldn't keep lying. He finally decided to spill the tea this time and tell the cops the real story. Apparently. Zhang Meng, in his description, was a pretty messed up and twisted person behind closed doors, even though she seemed all put together on the outside. And with that, Wang Zhijian began to spill the juicy details of their wild and passionate love affair. So back in May 2004. Wang Zhijian's ex-wife left him for another guy because she thought their relationship was too dull and he was just very boring. But then Zhang Meng came into his life and things started to look up. At first, Wang Zhijian didn't have any funny business in mind with her, but Zhang Meng was totally into him, probably because he was tall and handsome in his age. Anyway, they started dating, and Wang Zhijian was totally smitten with this woman. Who seemed cool and collected, but had a wild side too. He was so into her that he even went and got a tattoo of her portrait on his back. That's some serious commitment, if you ask me. During that time, Zhang Meng was still married when she dated Wang Zhijian. When he found out about that, even though he was really into her, he decided to break up because he had some principles. But Zhang Meng wasn't ready to let him go, and did something really crazy. She ran naked on the fifteenth floor of a hotel and threatened to jump if he really wanted a breakup. Wang Zhijian was like mind blown and didn't know what to do. He still loved her, and so of course he didn't want her to get hurt. And I think that's what he told himself. You know, by that he got a reason to change his mind and come back with her. Afterwards, worried that Wang Zhijian might change his tone later on, Zhang Meng pricked her finger, using her blood to write a declaration. On it were the words, "Quoted, I love Wang Zhijian and I want to marry him." Unquoted. Simultaneously, she pressured Wang Zhijian to write a similar pledge in blood. Wang Zhijian complied and wrote, "Quoted, I will love you for ten thousand years." Unquoted. And let me remind you, when they both did that, they were forty something rather than fourteen. So in the end, with Zhang Meng's relentless pursuit, and Wang Zhijian finally agreed to continue their dangerous love story. But like all secrets, it couldn't stay hidden forever. A few months later, Wang Zhijian received an expected phone call. It was Zhang Meng's husband. And he informed him that the three of them should probably meet up to discuss their relationship. The other person was very composed and logical on the phone, to the extent that it almost seemed devoid of emotion. So Wang Zhijian said, "Why not?" After they met up, Zhang Meng's hubby straight up asked her to choose between him and Wang Zhijian. And he promised not to make any more trouble, no matter what she decides. You know her hobby. So at the end of the day, Zhang Meng chose Wang Zhijian and kicked her husband to the curb. Well, Wang Zhijian didn't know that her ex 
wasn't the troublemaker, but her family's. So when Zhang Meng's family found out about the divorce, they were totally hating on Wang Zhenjian, thinking he was the one who broke up their marriage. They showed up at his job all the time and caused a ruckus, which ended up getting him fired. But he did get a fast stack of cash. That's a four hundred thousand Chinese yuan as compensation for his early retirement, which converted to roughly a fifty one thousand two hundred U.S. dollar back then. So he was super duper committed to start living with Zhang Meng, finally free from his job and his old ball and chain. But on Zhang Meng's side, her ex husband developed a stroke after their breakup. So she had to take care of him out of guilt, I bet, and stop seeing Wang Zhijian for a while. And when she saw that her ex was getting better, she could finally ditched him and went straight for the love of her life. Wang Zhijian was trying to be cool with this Zhang Meng's daughter because she wasn't to her mom, right? But she wasn't having any of it because she blamed him for her family falling apart as well. So the daughter was being teenager and rude to him this whole time. Meanwhile, her mother was basically living off Wang Zhijian's savings, buying expensive goods left and right. But Wang Zhijian couldn't do anything about it because Zhang Meng gets really mad really easily. Sometimes she treats him like a king, and he feels really lucky. But when she's in a bad mood, she treats him like dirt. Wang Zhijian said it was like she didn't even see him as a person. So Wang Zhijian was being super careful and sensitive during his relationship with Zhang Meng. He didn't want to say anything that might make her upset because he loved and afraid of her. That's why he didn't get to say anything about her expensive spending habits. But then, when things got really tight with money. Zhang Meng's daughter got accepted into the super fancy school in Singapore that she and her mother really wanted. Thus, by then, Wang Zhijian finally got a break from this、um, tiring relationship with Zhang Meng, as she had to take her daughter to Singapore. You know, they were living in China. Zhang Meng rented an apartment and became a mom who followed her kid around there on this. Um, companion visa in Singapore. So in Singapore, there is a rule that a parent cannot work during the first year of accompanying their child to school. Zhang Meng didn't have much cash, so she had to rent out her extra room to another mom, Yang Jie, and her kid. Meanwhile, Wang Zhijian stayed in China and didn't come to Singapore. He used this as a chance to break up with Zhang Meng and end their crazy relationship. While、well, he think he did in March two thousand and eight. After that, he got some new tattoos. One is this、um, grim ripper, and another of a snake totem. And this man's whole life seems to depend upon that woman, isn't he? So basically, he got these two tattoos that he says represent. Zhang Meng, the Grim Ripper tattoo is supposed to be her as a demon, and the Serpent Totem tattoo is supposed to remind him that she was a venomous woman. He said he got them as a reminder not to be caught up in her charms and to keep his distance. But I guess this woman was just too alluring, because when she went back to China for vacation, she managed to meet up with. Wang Zhijian, and it only took three days for him to fall for her all over again. He hung up with Zhang Meng three times in 2008 in Singapore using social passes, and according to him, things got weird and degrading. Wang Zhijian said he blew his cash on food for her and her kid, cooked their meals while. Marching on leftovers and hand washed all their clothes, even the undies. He got stuck in the bedroom with no clothes on, and Zhang Meng didn't let him leave the room when her daughter and other roomies were in the flat. And for the naked part, because 
Well, according to him, she always wanted to have fun with him in that very room. So he might as well stay naked all day. Like we said before, Zhang Meng got herself a rent shared flatmate, Yang Jie, and her daughter to live under the same roof with her and her daughter. Right? Yang Jie brought up to Zhang Meng that she didn't want a man live there with them. You know, he's a grown, not stranger to them. Zhang Meng couldn't lose Yang Jie as a rent sharing partner, so she assured her as long as Yang Jie and her daughter were at home. Wang Zhijian wouldn't appear anywhere other than her bedroom, and if he had to go to the bathroom, she would make him to use newspapers and plastic bags. As someone who wasn't financially well off, and her sub landlord was talking to her like that, what else could Yang Jie do? Even though she still felt a bit uncomfortable given the circumstances, Yang Jie had to suck it up and deal until he could get her own place. And as for Wang Zhijian, he did obey all the instructions Zhang Meng had told him. With no bathroom, he had to use plastic bags and newspapers for his business, like she said. He didn't push back because he thought he'd make things even worse. He even joked, quoted, "She might even take a bite out of me." Unquoted. During his first time in Singapore in July. Wang Zhijian blew through the two thousand and eight hundred Chinese yuan he had in just four days, mostly on treating Zhang Meng to grab. He even shelled out one hundred and forty Singapore dollar for a fancy crab feast at a local seafood spot. And after he went back to China, she rung him up, saying her pals mentioned a gig at a delivery company was recruiting. And pushed him to rush back to Singapore. You know he can work for her friend, like she told him, in Singapore. So he arrived Singapore that second trip on the third of August. She hooked him up with some agents who quoted all sorts of fees to score him a job, but she gave him the cold shoulders when he asked her to front the cash. They went back and forth a few times before he took off on the second of September the same year, jobless. Then, out of the blue, Zhang Meng hit him up, saying her daughter was getting moved to another school, and asked him to lend a hand with that move. So he cashed out seven thousand Chinese yuan, almost wiped out all of his life savings, and got back to Singapore on the ninth of September. In just five days, he blew through another two thousand Chinese yuan, including this a hundred and twenty Singapore dollar for a pair of crabs that he whipped up for that pair of mom and daughter. He got left with only two pieces of the crab for himself. Quoted, but then the daughter told her mom she wanted them for breakfast. I was crabless. Unquoted. Wang Zhijian shared with the cops later on. Then nine days later, on the eighteenth of September, around eight p.m., Zhang Meng waltzed into her room and let him know that she and her daughter were itching for crab again. Quoted, I reminded her that it just feasted on crab a week ago, and pointing out that our a hundred、um, Singapore dollar crab limit. Unquoted, he recounted. Well, that sparked a heated debate that stretched on for nearly an hour. Quoted, Zhang Meng dissed me, used some choice language. She called me a broke guy. I reminded her I'd been through all my savings for her. What more did she want? She even tossed out that I was the offspring of dogs and donkeys. That was the last straw for me. Quoted, Wang Zhijian explained, his temper flaring. Following the big argument around 9 p.m., Zhang Meng hit the sack wearing just her panties. Meanwhile, Wang Zhijian naked stretched out on this mattress in the same room, but snoozing was out of the question. He claimed he was totally spaced out. Quoted, "It felt like I couldn't even breathe. I was shaking all over. My brain was like a blank slate." 
Blood was pounding in my head, and I couldn't see anything. Just red. I couldn't keep my thoughts in check. Uncoated, he mouthed over how shady she was and how she was spending my death while not staying loyal to me. Around an hour later, he shuffled into the kitchen and hung out there for a while. You know, he wanted to stay away from her just so he could cool down. He said. But when he was in the kitchen, all he could see was the knives. He grabbed a knife, returned to the bedroom, and closed the door. The lights were still off. He rushed into Zhang Meng's bedroom and stabbed her ruthlessly. And while he was attacking, Zhang Meng's daughter heard noises came from her mother's room, so she was walking to it and wanted to check up for her mom. Blinded by hatred. Wang Zhijian's mind was clouded, and he didn't care who was coming towards him. He just killed. The mother and daughter suffered a total of 98 stab and slash wounds. After what he did to his lover and her daughter, he didn't just give up killing. He gone back to the kitchen to get another weapon. This time, settling on a chopper. That was when he entered the other bedroom to silence Yang Jie and her daughter. These are from the perspective of the perpetrator. Luckily, one of the victims survived. Yang Jie's daughter, the girl the police called the ambulance for, and she gave a detailed description of this crazy night from her point of view. She and her mom were snoozing when all of a sudden, this loud gasping noise woke her up. Like someone was having a hard time catching their breath or something. When she finally got sober, she heard the other teen yelling, "Auntie and uncle!" in Mandarin. Then there was the sound of cutlery clattering. Her and her mom, who was now also awake, started debating whether or not to call the cops. Before they could come up with a solution, their door swung open and Wang Zhijian rushed in. The daughter screamed, and he started stabbing her, slashing her, while her mother rushed out. She put her hands up when she squatted with her back to the wall, but that man continued using the chopper on her. She couldn't move. Didn't know how long it lasted until he left to go after her mother. While that devil was out in the corridor, he yelled to warn her not to move. Bleeding heavily, though, she struggled and crawled up to shut the bedroom door, but it just wouldn't work. He burst in again and pushed her onto the bed and continued to stab and slash her. She kicked him in the thigh and he fell, giving her the chance to run out of the room and into the kitchen toilet. She closed the foldable plastic door, but Wang Zhijian hacked at it until it collapsed. She said. Before slashing her head, face, and neck until she fell to the toilet floor. When he left her, her only thought was, "God, just let me die." He returned and stabbed her in the lower back, right ear, and back of the neck. So when she finally regained some consciousness, she could hear him talking to the police, who eventually rescued her. What she did not realize at the time was that her mother's body was on the ground floor. Yang Jie had died from a cure hemorrhage due to multiple injuries after landing on the head and left hip. She also had two wounds on her right and left fingers, which were not consistent with the falling. From the prosecution's argument, the wounds could be caused in the case that Yang Jie climbed out of the kitchen window. And stood on this little concrete overhang thing, while holding onto the laundry pole holders right below the window sill, worried that she might escape. Wang Zhijian used the chopper to cut her fingers and causing her to lose her grip. Forensic experts did not find Yang Jie's blood within the flat. Instead, it was found on the exterior wall of the kitchen besides these、um, bamboo pole holders. Which proved the prosecution's case. When Wang Zhijian was brought to the court, 
He stacks the story that he could not remember how he attacked his four victims, claiming his mind had gone blank from rage. He said he did not know how he had a knife in his hand and why he attacked Zhang Meng and the others. He said it was only when he was taking a shower after the attack that he realized something had happened. The prosecution, however, pointed out that not only did he remember to shower to wash the blood, he also then won his clothes, put plasters on his injured fingers, packed his bag, took his travel documents, and won his socks and shoes. He was clearly thinking well enough to realize he had to flee. Wang Zijian disagreed, saying if he had wanted to escape, he would have packed all his things and used a better bag. He also claimed that he did not remember putting on socks and shoes after his shower. I don't remember was basically his catchphrase during this trial. Interestingly, psychiatric experts for the prosecution and defense agreed that Wang Zijian was suffering from an adjustment disorder. But they weren't on the same page about whether it was enough to make him less responsible for the attack. So the judge was like, "Yeah, I got it. Dude was really pissed about how he had been treated, and just lost it after that huge argument. And he could be still all worked up when Zhang Meng's daughter walked into the scene. But then a bunch of stuff happened, right? Like." Wang Zhijian took the time to find a new weapon and even had the smarts to warn Yang Jie's daughter not to run off while he searched for her mother. So, like, he totally could have snapped back to reality at any point during all of that. And quoted, having killed the very person he was angry with and who had caused him so much stress and misery, there ought to have been a considerable degree of. Release of his bottled anger and emotions, the judge said. He found Wang Zhijian guilty of culpable homicide in the deaths of his lover and her daughter, but of murder when it came to Yang Jie. Therefore, Yang Zhijian was sentenced to death in his first trial. So, in November 2014, Yang Zhijian, who was 48 at the time, tried to get out of being executed, but didn't work. He lost his appeal for killing Yang Jie, and on top of that, he got nailed for murdering Zhang Meng and her daughter. The court, with three judges, agreed with the prosecution's appeal and found him guilty of all three murders. The judges, on this time, weren't buying that he lost control due to his mental condition anymore. Nope, they think he killed Zhang Meng because he was just so angry and wanted to get rid of her completely. And as for Zhang Meng's daughter, well, he just wanted to make sure there were no witnesses left behind. When the verdict was read, Wang Zhijian didn't show any emotion. This time around, there wasn't even a little smile. Very different to when he just got arrested. You can see this big smile on his face even through the car window. We have finally completed the story for the video. So Yang Jie and her daughter were totally innocent in this whole mess. They didn't even know the killer, man. They just happened to be in that flat at the wrong time. This is ultimately unfair. Reminds me of another case, Jiang Ge. She was also died for nothing. Moreover, her case stirred up a huge wave on the Chinese internet and changed the thoughts and behavior patterns of many people. Perhaps in the future, I might create a dedicated video discussing the Zhang Ge case. Regarding today's case, it was the result of an impulsive killing due to a misguided relationship, ultimately resulting in the intentional murder of other people. So in today's story, the killer turned out to be someone who was in a relationship where he was being controlled. He just couldn't hold in his anger anymore, which led to such a terrible tragedy. Although it seems a bit too convenient for Wang Zhijian to be portrayed as the passive side of this relationship, since it's all based on his statement. Nevertheless. 
that caused them to accept this emotional account. So let's assume that's how it actually happened. All I talked about earlier in this video was also a messed up romantic relationship. But in that case, the one doing the controlling was the one who committed the murder. As someone who has always had pretty normal and fair romantic relationships, it's really hard for me to get how these twisted dynamics of control and being controlled in relationship work. Well, I did some readings. They said people have various levels of psychological flaws. Some folks are just better at using these flaws to get what they want. In, in this case and the case we are talking about today, there is someone who is in charge, let's call them the controller or manipulators. These manipulators aren't necessarily experts on psychology or science, but they do know how to use psychology to their advantage. Like in today's story, Zhang Men got into a romantic relationship with Wang Zhijian. Then she could have used her ex-husband to make herself look good and impressive. For example, she could have portrayed her ex-husband as being very clingy and unable to bear the thought of her leaving him. Remember? And it was further proved by her ex-husband was having a stroke when she chose to break up and be with her lover. Although I'm not sure how how true was the story she made up to Wang Zhijian. Anyway, that further reinforced her desirable qualities in the eyes of Wang Zhijian. And that's how the manipulator takes control, you know, by getting the other person interested and curious about them. The manipulators will act in a way to make their target like them more. The more they hang out, the more the victims get attached to them. It gets to the point where the victim can't even imagine the manipulator doing anything wrong. Okay, so when the victim's guard is down, they might spill the beans on their psychological vulnerabilities to the manipulator. These could be major things like family problems, being bullied, or even getting assaulted. Or it could be something smaller like flunking an exam or losing a cherished item. The manipulator can use these weaknesses to make the victim feel inferior and switch things up for positive to negative reinforcement. So yes, there's, there's this thing called negative reinforcement. It's when someone does something negative and it makes them want to avoid that thing in the future. The manipulator will do something bad to you, say, if you were the victim, like being angry or leaving to make you scared of them. This could make you feel so bad about yourself and depend on them more. For example, let's say you are having a conversation with someone and they suddenly ended it, or you guys are getting into a habit of chatting and they suddenly canceled it. Stop the chats whatsoever. These actions could make you feel really bad and scared and you started to think about what you did wrong to cause these things to happen. You wouldn't realize it, but you start thinking about the manipulator all the time and it becomes harder to separate yourself from them. In today's story, Wang Zhijian was in and out of a relationship with Zhang Meng. Wang Zhijian couldn't say no to Zhang Meng. He had no say in entering or ending the relationship. That's why he needed to ink so many tattoos related to Zhang Meng on himself. He must have been aware of his passive situation when he was not with Zhang Meng. And there's this thing called the psychological contract, which was first brought up by Professor Adris from the US. Other scholars like Levinson then built on that. Basically, it's like a collaboration between individuals and organizations where everyone wants something out of it. Individuals want rewards and a company wants gains, and they both need to contribute to make it work. It's not like a written contract that you can hold, but it still has a big impact on people's mind. It's like you know what you got to do to make things work, even if it's not written down. What this emotional control we are talking about in this romantic relationship is different from this 
psychological contract. It's like when the player with the upper hand has control over you and is not in a fair situation. It's more like a master-slave relationship where the manipulated person is always subservient to the manipulator. The manipulated person's behavior is constantly being adjusted to fit the manipulator's need, which can lead to personality disorders. And in today's case, Wang Zijian was stuck in this very stage, I think. So he's stuck in a dilemma. On one hand, he wants to do everything to make Zhang Meng happy, but on the other hand, he's starting to feel angry and realize that he couldn't be, he shouldn't be completely controlled by her. His mind is probably all over the place with conflicting thoughts and emotions. When he had his outburst, he was probably super scared of letting down or even upsetting Zhang Meng, who was calling all the shots. At the same time, he was probably really mad at himself for feeling so helpless and frustrated. I think that's why he was diagnosed by the psychiatric experts with an adjustment disorder, and it led to the initial trial judge finding Wang Zhijian guilty of culpable homicide in the deaths of his lover and her daughter. Thankfully, due to his appeal, more evidence came to light. Allowing prosecutors and judges to conduct a more thorough analysis, eventually he was reclassified as a murderer for the aforementioned deaths. Hope you're doing well and don't run into any jerks out there. But if you do, be brave and get the support you need asap. May there be peace in the world. If you're digging my stuff, be sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Very appreciate. Bye.